different requirement. Southern US, seven pound per million uh, cubic foot. It's okay. Northern part become four pound per million cubic foot. Canada is even less, two to four. What is the reason for that? Yeah, it's getting colder, colder, and colder when we go up, right? So that's what happened. So when we have hydrate, uh, not just hydrate, we, we have to remove our water, right? To remove all those water, we will use a glycol contactor, and you will go to the gas tank to take a look at it. Okay. Or we may use molecular sieve, uh, batch treating. So batch treating, I don't think you see at that. But this number, seven power, uh, million cubic foot, that is the number that you will put in the homework and probably the next set because we are in the southern part of the US. Right? Memorize that. Seven power uh, per million cubic foot. So last time we go over uh, ethics uh, and we talk a little bit about safety. So you know the tornado shelter and Maybe from time to time, review those charts on where to go. Okay, when there's a fire. Did you turn on your cell phone? Keep, keep it on, okay? And maybe uh, silent or something so that if there's a text announced, you know that when we have to leave. Um, last time we go on smaller diagram. Smaller diagram we will use more for uh, compressor calculation. For flow across a shock, enthalpy is constant. Not talk, I never talk. Have so much talk, okay? So, for flow across a, a shock, enthalpy is constant. So, it getting colder, gas getting colder. In compressor, when we compress the gas, gas get hotter, okay? In compressor, gas get hotter, and we will use smaller diagram to check how much hotter. Uh, <coughs> hydrate curve will tell us how much heat is needed. Okay, but it doesn't tell me if we can provide that or not. To know if we can provide that or not, we use Q equal to U A T sub A. This equation tells us. So if we set a certain temperature for water in the bath, what's going to happen on the heat that goes to the gas? Okay, we need a certain amount of heat. And that heat will be BTU per hour, right? If you cancel all the unit, <coughs> is it going to be BTU per hour? I have a fifth square, so it cancel with that. T sub M Fahrenheit, it cancel with that, so you will left the amount of heat per unit time in BTU per hour, all right? So this number better match to the number that you get from the curve of more. So this curve, we do with the flow rate, and eventually we get, okay, this much BTU per hour, the amount of heat from the fire tube should be more than this, okay? So in this chart, I tell you how to calculate U value, right? We don't really calculate U value, but we get from the chart. When the pipe gets smaller, gas go faster, U value go up from here. 
and the unit of U value in both SI and engineering unit, you need to memorize that. Okay, you need to know about it. So far, no question about how to get U value, right? We just need to know the pipe. What kind of pipe? Is that standard pipe, two inch, three inch? Okay, that's it. And we also need to know the flow rate. So I think last time we stopped around here about log mean temperature. Log mean temperature is greater greatest difference minus lowest difference divided by the ratio of that. This is concurrent flow. So wherever that we have the greatest difference, that is good over there. Okay. And we will go to that for the case of light heater very soon. Okay, 109.9. Who review this material to find out how we get 109.9? No one? No one? No one? No extra credit, but just raise your hand if you did that. No one did that? Did you already do that? Review how to get 109.9? Uh, I think sometimes, maybe three, three years ago, this was in the exam about how to get that 109.9. And many students give me 1 over 109.9, which is obviously zero, okay? So it's, it's said to be easy, but it's not the same as unit conversion, and, okay? You should review it. This is, I get around 109.9, I get 110. Okay? Review this. Okay, heat duty, total heat, is heat that used to heat gas, heat that used to heat oil, heat that used to heat water, plus heat loss. Heat loss is estimated to, to be 10% of those things. All right, that is the amount of heat loss. But heat loss vary greatly with weather condition. So in summer, we don't have much heat loss, but in winter, we may have a lot of heat loss. Um, we will look at it in separate section later. So now we know how to calculate each part. Next is fine tube length. How long should be the fine tube length? We have the equation over here. L equal to 3.8, 10 to the power minus 4, Q over D. That's it. You just put the number in, you get the number out. Okay, one mistake that you may make is you don't write that equation to the exam room. So if you don't write it, you don't have it, then you cannot do it. So make sure when you write it, you know which is which. All right? So that information has to go into your information sheet. So this is based on the assumption that heat flux is about 10,000 millivolts per hour per square feet. And that's an information. Okay. Uh, graduate student, you have to pay more attention to this. <coughs> Coil diameter and the wall thickness. So the restriction of the type of the coil that we put in is about whether we have corrosive gas or not. Okay? And sometimes we put a bigger pipe because we want the speed to be slow. If we have small pipe, and gas coming in, gas try to squeeze through that small pipe. So the velocity in the pipe is high. But if we use a bigger pipe, gas doesn't have to squeeze into that and the speed can be lower. So this has to do with the erosional velocity, okay? And the actual velocity inside the pipe. Uh, we will talk about that. In summary, to size the light heater, which of course, very obvious that it, there's no other question to ask you in the exam than to ask this. Um, we need to check, do we need light heater at all? Are we in the hydrate formation line? So if we are at high pressure, low temperature, maybe we need that, okay? So if we have uh, a little bit of Water or oil or it's corrosive, oh, please, please give the setup sheet to me. We may need to use cast iron instead of steel. 
Okay. So once we check hydrate temperature, the next step is calculate the firebox rating. You remember how to do that? Yes? Firebox rating, how do we do it? Okay. What is them? Who decided? it? What's your name, sir? Daniel? How do we calculate firebox rating? Use a chart. Yeah, kind of right answer. You remember the chart that have this curve, several line of them, and we have a dash line. We use that chart. That chart will tell us BTU per bar mole, right? And from volumetric flow rate, we know that about 380 cubic foot is one bar mole. Then we can calculate BTU per hour. Everyone can do this. Oh, it's not too quick, right? We did that already. Okay. So that is tell us the required heat to heat that gas. Next, we should call pressure rating. High pressure rating comes from a table one. We, we didn't talk about that yet. It is this table. So this is maximum coil working pressure. This is all also in the CWAS textbook. So basically, if it cannot withstand a shunted pressure, we just don't use it. Okay. We'll talk more about that. After we check core pressure rating, we check erosional velocity. Okay. And then we check pressure drop. Alright. And then later on we calculate the U value. So U value has to do with the coil length and the bar temperature. Okay, we will talk more about that through the example. Here's how we calculate pressure drop. Okay. Pressure drop in the pipe, for the case of gas, okay, we, we can use pan and equation, Raymond equation, but for this case, we use the chart that company gave us. Okay. That is a formula depending on equivalent length. Equivalent length comes from a table from a company. Okay. Uh, equivalent length has to have the unit in feet. Uh, pressure drop factor, this term, P1 square minus P2 square, comes from a chart. P1, what is that P1? In the pressure. So if I have the coil, 10 feet. I want to know the pressure drop. I need to know the pressure at the inlet first. Okay. I need to know the length of the pipe, then I can calculate. Now I look up the table to find the equivalent length. I look at the chart to find what is the pressure drop factor. Let's see some example. Okay, this one, we are asked to decide the line meter by just considering the pressure drop and the maximum working pressure in the line heater. What is the smallest coil size to be used for? Three minutes like we per day. Why do we worry about the smallest size? Anyone? Daniel, why my smallest size? Cost, I think cost. We can buy a bigger one if we work, but we don't want to know that. We want to know what is the smallest size that we can use. Because that will be uh, cheapest, uh, less expensive. Okay. Where the pressure drop is less than uh, 20 psi, yes. I just have a question. So, whenever, is there any like uh, potential like washouts that we can have in the whatever it turns the end of the coil as it comes out? So, the coil turn, right? How do we get the pressure drop on that turn? Uh, what was your question? No, I was saying, can we have washouts in the actual... Washout? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> maybe we, we have the turn. Typically, we don't need to do anything. I don't think I answered your question, but what, what happened is that we are doing is we just size the pipe and tell the company what we want, and they just do everything that it needs to be done. Yeah. And what is inside <coughs> that coin, who you see in the East Campus. Okay. Any More questions? What? Is it 
the turn is more susceptible to erosion? The turn more susceptible for the erosion? I think so. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? You don't agree? Oh, yeah, that's you want to do some special thing as a washout over there or what? <coughs> Uh, the, the part that we bought, it just come as is. Okay. We take them this part number, they send me. They put everything needed in there already. Okay. So provided that we use, we calculate the erosional velocity. Okay. Of course, the turn, they engineer it already. But they don't really tell us what's in there, whether they do that, make it a little bit thicker over there. They didn't tell us. They say, okay, if we use the right erosional velocity and we below it, we don't have to worry about anything. Okay. This third part, very obvious, I think it is more susceptible for the erosion. <coughs> more question. Let's take a look at how we do it. So this question is just consider about the pressure drop. We want the pressure drop to be equal or less than 20 psi. That is kind of rule of thumb. We don't want the pressure drop to be more than that. Okay? If we use big pipe, less pressure drop. Right? Small pipe, more pressure drop to move the same amount of gas. So, the given information is the uh, shutting pressure is 3,000 PSIG. And <clears throat> so this is the pressure when uh, there is in shutting. So we look at 3,000 and we check. Maximum working pressure, any of them that is less than 3,000, we don't use it. Easy, right? Step one is easy. So two. Standard pipe is less than 3,000, so we don't use that. Two and a half, we don't use that because it's below 3,000. This thing, below 3,000, below 3,000, below 3,000, we don't use it. Okay, very easy. That's step one. So we have many of them left. Okay, we move to step two. Use the chart. So in the pressure, uh, Pressure factor, P1 squared minus P2 squared. Okay. We read that from the chart. Easy, right? So this chart is the pressure factor, uh, pressure square, the difference of pressure square per 100 feet. Okay. Versus this axis is gas flow rate, MMSCFD. So the chart will be provided. You don't write a chart in the in the information sheet. So, so we don't know what P two is yet. So, are we assuming a twenty psi drop? We don't assume that, or we don't assume anything. We don't know what P P two is. What we want to find. So, how, how can we find P one squared minus P two squared if we don't know P two? Ah, okay. How the question I got is how do we find P one squared minus P two squared if we don't know P two? Here's how we find it. Okay. Or is this just a generic for that specific part? Uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. We have flow rate of 3 million, right? 3 million static to foot per day. Step one, start at line of 3 million. Okay. Step two, find out what part that we want to calculate. So we want to inch double X heavy. I draw that line from there. And there's a dash line over here, you see? Above, read up. Below, read down. So that line, this pipe happened to be above the line, so I read up. I go up, it tell me something over there. That number is P1 squared minus P2 squared. So we don't calculate it, but we read it from the chart. Good? Easy enough. Uh, bring ruler to the exam, okay? Uh, yes. Over there, uh, it's below the line, but you can bring up as well. Oh, okay. That is because even though it's below this line, but that specific line, you see this line, it's a read up. 
I just follow the instruction. <laughs> no magic here. So I go from three million like we put there. He said read up. I go read up. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the question that I have now is, okay, let's say I have um, hundred thousand, one million. And that point is, let's say, in the middle, in the log scale. How much is that? If it is in the middle, so uh, this kind of everything. Oh, uh, who wants to answer? Okay, y'all. Okay, y'all. In the log scale. I have 100,000 and over here is 1 million okay. or 1,000,000, 1 million and my point happened to be right at the middle how much is that young? I want exact number. Who can tell me exact number? Exact number. Exact number. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You raise your hand, what's your name, sir? Where's? <laughs> I'm sorry, I will ask you your name. Not. What is the exact number for that? I'm going to say yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It is a log scale. So on that thing is going to be what's 100k, 100 and three more zero, right? So this is 10 to the power of five, and that part is 10 to the power of six, right? So log scale means it is linear on the log scale. So this means. That pi can be represented by just number five. And that pi can be represented by just number six. The middle between five and six must be five pi. Five by five. Very good. So that pi has to be 10 to the power of five by five. That's it. 316,000. Yeah, I think that's exact. I believe you. Okay. Very good. Okay. What if it's not in the middle? What if it's not in the middle? What if it's just 25% uh, from the left? So this means it's not 5 by 5, but 5.25. So that point would be 10 to the power of 5.25. Very easy, right? So now, you don't have any X skills, except if you don't have ruler, okay? So now you don't have any excuse to not give me the exact number. It will be 10 to the power of something. Okay, it will be 5 and 6. Anyone get confused? You can do it. Log scale. And what, what do you really need to find is, where's the line for 100,000? Where's the line for a million? So the line for that, so a million, uh, Maybe this line, one of this line, I don't know. Maybe that line, so if you do that, you go over that. Maybe it's in the middle, so you get it. This is a detail, but basically it's like what I explained. We use linear on the exponent of the base 10. Good? All right. You may see that I have several readings. Why is that? Because I have many pi that pass the criteria. The criteria that I have is it just has to withstand the pressure more than 3,000 and there are many of them that can withstand the pressure more than 3,000. So I take all of them and I read 
the pressure drop factor. Okay, I get the pressure drop factor for each of them. Okay, I get the pressure drop factor for each of them. So that is P2, P1 square minus P2 square per 100 feet. Then I plug that back in. Okay, this is how I, I get that. Okay, but, but you, you just use the method that we just talked about. I just plug that back in. So this P1 square minus P2 square comes from a shot. Right? And this is the candidate that has 3,000 PSI uh, criteria. Okay, what about L sub E? Where does that come from? Table. Who, who, who haven't downloaded the textbook yet? Did you download the textbook? You need to read the chapter about indirect heating. The rest of the course, we don't really use that textbook. We use that indirect heating chapter. Okay. All right. This is a standard indirect heater with steel pipe coil. You see this? The tubing size. One inch S, one inch S, two inch double S, and something. We have equivalent length of pipe okay, for pressure drop in feet. Wait, so what does the X means? Extra. Okay, extra. So when I say extra heavy, uh, I know that my accent may be not that great, but let's look at this chart. You see this chart? One inch X heavy Y, HBY. So one inch extra heavy. If I have two X, mean double extra heavy. It's thicker and getting thicker. Okay? So this S or double S is actually correlated to schedule 40, schedule 80, schedule 160. Okay? Um, how did that help us? Like, why do you want a thicker part? Why do we want a thicker part? Actually, this is not about thick or not thick. It's about pressure rating. Okay? If we have two inch, standard. 2 inch double X, 2 inch triple X, more X means it can withstand more pressure. Okay. But the reason that different X have different Q value is not about the fact that it's thicker. It's about if you have more X, when it's thicker, the inlet diameter is less. So look at this one. You see 2 inch standard. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay, this is two inch double X. Okay, that's two inch of X. And this dash line is two inch, just one X heavy. So because it's thicker, the inner diameter is, the actual inner diameter is lower. When it's lower, gas flow a little bit faster. So this line, that's why it's a little bit over that line. Okay? Just a second ago, you said that 3x was schedule 160, 2x was schedule 8. I, I think I went wrong, because they say otherwise. So let's say 160. Uh, <clears throat> that chart will have to be given, okay? okay. To correlate about S, double S. But typically, I just ask you, based on this, okay, which one do we use, S or double S? Okay, you see, what S? And I have equivalent length of 93.2. 93.2 come from that number, 41x. And I also have 96.4, 96.4 from, from that number. That's for one inch x, right? Okay. And I get p1 squared minus p2 squared from the chart. That comes from the chart. Okay. P1 is given. It's 3,000 when we use PSIA, so I add 14.7. Right now, I know almost everything for that formula. That's my formula. Okay. I know this term. I have P1, I can do P1 square. I have L sub E, I can divide it by 100, right? I can put everything together and raise to the power of 0.5. Then I can calculate P2. Good? And P1 minus P2 will give me pressure drop. Okay. That's easy to exam, okay, for sure. The pressure drop calculation. 
It's one of the candidate index. I mean, I don't put it there, but I want to learn about it. Okay. So what I did is I take every possible pipe size, put it in Excel, 5P1, read the chart for every case, read the table for L sub P for every case, and try to find VP, the pressure drop per 100 feet. Okay. And then I find out which one that have pressure drop per 100 feet less than 20. Okay. So the, the question that <coughs> when we select we want 20 PSI per 100 feet. And this chart is the equivalent length per, one, per 100 feet. So this, the reference is like 2 inch pipe. So 2 inch pipe, 100 feet up to inch pipe, we have the equivalent length about 100 feet. Okay. So this is the equivalent length that they put it in. So once I know this, I select which one do I select? So this one is more than 20, this one is more than 20, I don't like it. So this is a little bit less than 20, maybe this one is a smallest pipe, okay, that work. This one is less than 20, maybe this one, I mean, 2 double X. Or oh, that's what is 2.5 triple X. So we try to select the <coughs> smallest size that is good. Okay, in this case, okay, one inch have enough pressure rating, true, but it has pressure of about 20 psi per 100 feet. Two X size is smallest size that work. Select two X, okay? Smallest size that it work. More question. Yeah. Yes. So all these pressure drops, do those correspond to that specific length? So 52 PS 0.49 PSI is equivalent. That's over 93.2 feet of that pipe. 100 feet of that pipe. Is is in the uh, in the textbook? Okay. It will tell you this. It will tell that the equivalent length of pipe is per a certain actual length. So if you have actual length of 100 feet, that is the equivalent length. Okay, it's, it's per 100 feet. So, the, so those values are normalized already to? To 100 feet. Okay. All right, and actually, different, when they sell it, okay, when they sell it, you, you, may, you may see that, okay, we have equivalent length or something. It depends on how much length of the tube in the line meter that we want. Can we use any number? No. They sell it at a certain length. Okay. They will sell two, one inch, but at a certain length. It depends on how many how many tubes do we put. Do we put six and eight and six, or we put four and four? If we put four and four, that's the length that we have. If we put if they put eight and six, so it's like a model number. If we use that part. That is a thing. Something like that. So this is just not quite a good pressure drop, but it's a pressure drop to select the line heater. So that's why we use that table. So this thing is it's just it's not any engineering yet. It's just reading the chart. Do you know how to read the chart? Do you know how to follow that instruction? Just that. Everything cool? No nothing difficult, right? Just use the chart, use the table. Your task though. You have to read the textbook and be familiar with this this kind of table. Because if I just show the table in the exam and you don't have any idea what it is, then you cannot do it. So read the textbook, find out which chart is where, okay? That's in the homework too. This is about pressure drop calculation. Good. More question? All right. Oh, yes. Why did you pick the two? If there's other ones that are less than 20, why did you pick the one that was at 11? S, that not? Are you talking about that one? I'm talking about, well, there's multiple ones that are less than 20. Is, does it not come down to cost, or is that another factor? Okay. We want a smallest one. That less than 20, but still withstand the, the pressure. And we don't do spatial order. 
which one is special order? Category C. So that is kind of special order. So we don't do that. So when I look at this, I have 2 inch FS, 2 inch double X, and then when I look at this, I have 2 inch double X, 2 inch X. So between 2 inch double X and 2 inch X, both of them have less pressure drop. But which one do you want to select? X. Well, that's what I'm saying, is 2x not cheaper than 2x? 2x has one X will be cheaper than double X, so uh, we select a thinner one. Oh, I see it. Oh, okay. Okay, that's still like seven. Okay. Uh, you also see better heat transfer with thinner wall, thinner wall pipes? Uh, I, I think that's not quite matter. Okay. What happens is this, when you look in your value, your value calculation, typically big pipe should have less heat transfer, right? Because it's kind of take more this time for heat to propagate. Shorter pipe may be like better heat transfer, but that's not quite the case here. What happens is the U value is calculated from 1 over H R like combination of uh, convective heat transfer plus one over k log of something over something plus one over hr. I know that that's not a full form of formula, but what I mean is there are three parts that resist the heat movement. The big or big pipe doesn't matter. The heat transfer resistance due to pipe to be a little bit thicker is not as much as the heat transfer resistance that comes from the gas that gets slower. So if gas moves slower, it transfers less heat. That's matter more than the pipe is bigger. I mean thicker, a little bit bigger. So the thickness of the pipe it matters but not much. So we go through that, how to read the pressure drop, how to use a table. Not much engineering yet. All right, example. So this will clear how do we do the exam and put everything together and how do you do your design. We have gas flow rate that is set, right? Uh, gamma 0.7 is the exam, of course, sometimes I don't tell you gamma, I tell you gas composition and you have to tell me which charge to use. Calculate gamma by yourself. Is that for pressure, 200 psi, uh, is it 200 psi? Okay, 200 psi g. Line pressure, 750 psi g. Well, shut in pressure, 3000 psi g. Uh, I think that's more like 2000 or something. We will check when we go to the solution. Single pass coil, we select to use a single pass coil that heat from 71 to 125. Okay, here's the solution part. From table one, two inch X heavy pipe should be used in terms of pressure. So number one, we look at pressure, right? This is the same thing that what we did. Okay, we want to withstand the well shut in pressure, 3000 psi. Previous example show us that we should use two x, two double x work, but it's not the smallest size. And two x will withstand the shutting pressure and not have too much pressure drop. Good. So this this part of the solution come from the thing that we just did together. Okay, we did that already. Next step is. We already did in uh, figure one. I think that is, this one is 2000 because in figure one, I try to make the question to be the same. In figure one, we go from uh, 2000 to what? To 750. Okay. This time we also go from 2000 to 750. Okay. So uh, that is a typo. Add one more zero so that the the 
if the flow pressure is 2,000 or 200. Uh, just press stop and press start. You do that. <laughs> 